In the previous series of videos, we have compared the time responses and steady state errors for the first order water tank level control system for both the continuous S and the discrete Z domain. Here we extend this analysis to the second order system. So first we will consider an application model such as the hobby type DC servo motor. Then we will obtain a simplified DC servo model. We will then use the simplified model to derive the closed loop transfer function in both the continuous S and the discrete Z domains. A hobby servo DC motor consists of mainly the DC motor, gear assembly, a sensor, which is in this case a potentiometer, and a controlling circuit with an integrated H bridge. The last motor shaft in the gear assembly is connected to the potentiometer, and as the motor rotates, the output arm of the potentiometer will also rotate, and this will generate a signal. The signal represents the angular position changes, and this will be the feedback signal to the control circuit. In essence, the human gives a position command, perhaps via the digital output pin from an Arduino. This will uh, get the servo a boost of current to try to accelerate. The current control is done by pulse width modulation, or PWM. The PWM frequencies could range from 50 Hz for hobby servo motors all the way uh, perhaps to 20 kHz or even more, which is out of the audible range for the industrial servo motors. Most hobby servo motors have the following three simple connections. The black or brown uh, is the ground wire, the red is the power wire and the yellow or the white is the pulse width modulated wire. So the yellow PWM input wire to the servo motor will be connected to one of the Arduino's digital output pins as shown here. Gearboxes, which are common features in electric motors, use the mechanical advantage of gears to reduce the speed of the motor and increase the torque. If we assume that the current gear uh, box ratio is 10 to 1, then if the DC motor has an output RPM of 500, then the angular speed at the load will be 50 RPM in this case. You simply divide the motor RPM by the gear box ratio, you will obtain the output speed at the load. You can also calculate the output torque at the load using the gearbox ratio. For example, the DC motor output torque multiplied by the gearbox ratio multiplied by the gearbox efficiency will give you the output torque at the load. So say your DC motor output torque is 5 kg centimeter and the gearbox ratio is 10 to 1 and the gearbox efficiency is 90% then this will lead roughly to around an output torque of 45 kg centimeter. Please note that it's important to take the gearbox uh, material and strength into consideration as they could be the limiting factor. A simplified motor feedback control system can be redrawn as such. So if we assume that the circuit in the servo is simple with a simple gain with an op amp for example, then the motor feedback control system can be shown as such. The shaft of the DC motor is connected to the sensor, which is a potentiometer in this case. As the DC motor shaft rotates, the potentiometer arm will rotate, outputting a certain position.
normally APID controller is involved rather than a simple gain KP. Please note that the inverting of amp used could be the LM675 from Texas Instruments. The LM675 is capable of delivering output currents in excess of 3 amps. Generally, uh, you can couple a motor to a load via three possible mechanisms. One is the gear transmission, as the case here. You could also use a belt and a pulley drive or a lead screw drive. For this case, it's very important to note that the inertia of the gearbox must be calculated and reflected back at the motor shaft. So when we later discuss the term J, which is the inertia, what we mean by this is the inertia not just for the DC motor, but also the inertia reflected at the motor shaft due to the gear box or the gear train. The feedback controller of the servo DC motor can be also represented with a block diagram as shown here. The proportional gain is the first block we come across. So the value of KP can be selected to tune the system performance. For example, KP can be calculated to give the system an overall damping factor of 1. This can be done by recognizing the denominator of the transfer function, then extracting the damping factor and the natural frequency. We do expect though that the Kp is a negative in this case, and this is true if the op amp is an inverting one, which is the case of the LM675. The next block is the operational amplifier the LM675 used in this case. If we assume that the operational amplifier is ideal, then the voltages at the input nodes of the op amps are equal. Equating the current in the upper branch, this will lead to the gain of the op amp. The gain in this case is a negative of 2.2. If you recall from a previous lecture, we managed to obtain the output rotational speed of the DC motor in terms of the input voltage. Now for simplifying the calculations, if we assume the inductance as zero and the friction or any viscous friction as also zero, then we can arrive at the following relation. Remember, since our main objective is to control the position of the DC servo motor, so we need somehow to convert the radian per second or the output of the motor transfer function into an angular position. So we can simply use that the derivative of the position gives the angular velocity. Hence, the main objective of the shaft block is to integrate the angular velocity into position. For the potentiometer and the feedback loop, if we assume it has a range of two turns and zero degrees is in the center of motion, one turn in the negative direction and one full turn in the positive direction. So we can express the output voltage in terms of the shaft position using the following relation. This assumes that the supply for the potentiometer is 5 volts. We can now redraw the block diagram as follows. To reduce the calculations involved in the coming videos, and since our main objective is to compare the Z domain and the S domain for a second order system, 
and discuss the effect of the sampling time on the response. We will uh, assume for this example that all the coefficients are equal to 1.